So we just came back from visiting the Trinity site in New Mexico, and it's on an Air Force base at White Sands. Welcome. Your rights have been suspended. To see trap tie-ins, what could happen to you? Please have your government ID ready. There's no photos. What is it that we're going to see right here if we film that is... It's that bush over there, secret. Oh. It's a missile range, they still use it today, and they'll only let the public in two days out of the entire year. So we waited for the day and we decided we wanted to finally go see uh, the place where the first atomic bomb was dropped. And what we saw was pretty shocking. Not because there's really anything there from the atomic bomb blast to see, but because we witnessed, well, basically, the attitude of Americans about the bomb. I think what was most shocking for me was the Disney landing of this thing. I mean, everyone's gathering around and lining up and driving all this way, elderly people and families with children and people bringing their dogs so they can come stand and stare at a, an obelisk in the middle of nowhere in a fenced in circular area that's being guarded by military men to basically guard an empty area. Guarding children and old folks with machine guns. And, and it was a tourist area, but if you didn't know better, it would look like a scene from a FEMA camp. Because it's just ordinary Americans, average tourists. And, and they all look like they're milling about in a row, lining up. Yeah, that's exactly what it looked like for a FEMA camp. While you overhear all of these completely ignorant just completely incorrect versions of history that absolutely never happened. We overheard mothers telling their children that if we didn't bomb Japan first, they would bomb us. As if Japan even had a bomb. They're walking up to this obelisk thing and they're taking selfies. Selfies of themselves next to the place where supposedly the first atomic bomb was dropped. Is there any place people won't take selfies? I've seen this everywhere that we've gone in these places where horrible things have happened. That's a man. Go All right, now look casual. <laughs> a one, where are you going to put that picture? Are you going to put that in a photo album? Is it really, most of these memorial sites you go to, it's just filled with propaganda and really weird mismatch. Happy to be there, but it's a tragic site. I think this place has a gift shop. And it was so creepy, all the babies and children, and, and they weren't concerned that they were being held basically at gunpoint by soldiers. They were talking to them, being friendly. And <laughs> Why aren't you smiling now? <laughs> I mean, I guess rightfully so, safety. the soldiers are American people, but it was a creepy, creepy scene. And one of the things that got me was the guy who had the T-shirt that was all sarcastic and supposed to be clever, and it said... Back to back World War One and World War Two champs, like it's all just a funny wrestling match or a just a sport. These world wars that killed tens of millions of people. And I mean, you can, that's the shirt you wear to the uh, side of the atomic bomb. The side of the atomic bomb, and you could buy your own T-shirts with the fat boy on it and everything, and, and your own coffee mug and bumper sticker. I mean. What kind of jackhole drinks their coffee out of a Hiroshima bomb coffee cup every day? That's patriotism. That's Merca. Seriously? <laughs> so while everyone's walking around taking selfies of themselves next to this bomb area, seemingly oblivious to what's going on, you have armed men walking around guarding them with loaded weapons. And Aaron went up to one and asked him, do you feel like you're training your gun on the American people? Hey, sir. Are you holding people hostage? No. It kind of looks like you're holding the American people at gunpoint. No. You don't feel that way? Uh, uh, White Sands Missile Range uh, Security. Yeah. And we're here. We're here. Basically, we're the ones that, that opened the whole site. Uh -huh. And it's for security purposes and for, for active shooter. So for we're active shooter? Yes. We're, we're here for protection. Okay. Uh, an active shooter or something goes on like that, we just uh, take action on that. And he said, no, I'm protecting everyone from active shooters. I've just never seen a tourist site under gunpoint, so, okay. Yeah, because active shooters are going to get onto a military base, first, which you have to go through a checkpoint to even get onto, then drive out to a pit in the middle of nowhere, and then start shooting everyone. Come on. They treated that entire visitation like a military drill, like an exercise in crowd control. It's a military base. 
and they had military control over the people. And just visiting it was a reminder of basically who's in charge. And so they're walking along these fenced areas while people walk in, in lines to go see this obelisk thing. <laughs> I guess that's really patriotic. And then as we're leaving, one of these armed guards was walking with two soldiers and BDUs. And we could hear them talking behind us. And the armed guy, we overheard his version of history. And it went something like this. Well, you know, after they bombed Pearl Harbor, we had to come up with something. So we dropped the first bomb on Japan. And then Japan gave us the middle finger. So we dropped another one. That's his version of what happened. There's so many things wrong with that. Such a lie. Oh, wow. Wow. That's such a lie. That's such a lie. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's not what happened at all. And he just looked at me sideways and walked away really fast. Like he didn't want to engage me, but I know he heard me calling the liar. We didn't get it on tape, but it was so ridiculous. It was such an absurd lie. And with the attitude, of, they gave us the middle finger, celebrating, not knowing anything about what really happened. And you know what the real facts of the Manhattan Project are? They speak to prior knowledge and a total setup for world government. The world will note that the first atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, a military base. We won the race of discovery against the Germans. We have used it in order to shorten the agony of war, in order to save the lives of thousands and thousands of young Americans. We shall continue to use it until we completely destroy Japan's power to make war. Fact one, Einstein's letter to FDR calling for a uranium bomb project was signed and dated August 2nd, 1939, a month before Hitler invaded Poland and started World War II. Fact two, in a follow-up to a series of letters from Einstein and Hungarian refugee Leo Szilard, FDR created the National Defense Research Council, or NDRC, which oversaw the S-1 Uranium Committee and the Manhattan Project in the spring of 1940, before Pearl Harbor. Fact 3. The British Mod Committee was pressuring Americans to create an atomic bomb since the spring of 1940, and numerous secret research projects, including the one for the enrichment of uranium, were given to the U.S. NDRC scientists by their British counterparts. Fact 4. On December 6, 1941, yes, the day before Pearl Harbor, Vannevar Bush, the head of the NDRC, held a meeting formally launching the Manhattan Project to create an atomic bomb. Yes, before. Fact 5. Leading scientists of the Manhattan Project planned much of their secret weapons research at the secretive and elite Bohemian Grove retreat in September 1942. Fact 6. The bomb didn't end the war. Scientists were in fact racing to finish the bomb before the war ended and were afraid peace would come too quickly before they had a chance to test or drop the bomb. Fact 7. Japan's Emperor Hirohito had tried to formally surrender before the Potsdam Conference of July 17th and August 2nd, where Truman and Churchill informed their tenuous ally Stalin about the existence of the bomb. The U.S. warned Japan of total and utter destruction, but ignored their terms of surrender. Fact 8. Hiroshima was a virgin target, and the resident of Hiroshima and medical doctor Shintaro Hito wrote about how bombers flew over the city daily throughout the course of the war and spared it until the day the atomic bomb was dropped. Someone wanted to see how much damage it could do. Fact 9. The U.S. dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima on August 6, 1945, and then again on Nagasaki on August 9, 1945. The reason that two bombs were dropped was not because of the Japanese attitude towards surrender, but the fact that the first bomb, Little Boy, was made of uranium enriched at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and the second, Fat Man, was made of plutonium enriched at Hartford, Washington. And they wanted to make sure both worked and compare and contrast their destructive power since it cost the U.S. billions and billions of dollars. Fact 10. General Dwight D. Eisenhower, the Supreme Allied Commander of Europe during World War II, and Curtis LeMay, head of Strategic Air Command and the bombing campaign of Japan, 
both went on record to say the use of the atomic bomb was unnecessary and that Japan's defeat was inevitable without its use. God, I really hope the ignorance stops. I'm still not over this, and it's been several days now, but the worst, I think, of the entire thing was you had people outside the gate, people who had lived in the neighboring communities where they dropped this bomb, downwind of the fallout. These people were not told what had happened when it went down. They were told that it was a munitions drop, it was an accident, they did not, they were not warned there would be fallout, they were not warned about radiation danger. In fact, on the day that this happened, the children in some of these surrounding communities thought the fallout was snow and they were playing in it and rubbing it on their faces and skin. I mean, this is the way that it went down. And the government to this day will let people come in there and buy t-shirts and coffee mugs, but they will not admit that there were people living downwind of this test. So you have generation after generation of people who are dying of cancer, mutated genes that are being passed on. These people were protesting out in the front, these elderly people holding up signs because they were lied to by the government. And you have these people who I guess think they're being patriotic, men, grown men, with their wife and children in the car driving out of the gate of seeing the Trinity site and seeing these elderly people with their cancer signs. And you know what the grown men are doing? They're flipping off elderly cancer survivors and cussing them out out the window and telling them to go F themselves. I mean, that's that's patriotism. That's America, right? It was one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen in real life. Yeah, and I was talking to one of the guys and he was explaining all his seven different cancers and how all the guys he had worked with in the area were all already dead from cancer and describing how much it cost. And then telling me his real fear was that they wanted them all to die and they just wanted to exterminate everyone in the area and basically clear off the land. And how do you come to terms with that when you think that it's probably true? (laughs) In fact, there's very little reason to think it's not true. They treat those people like they could care less about them. They won't even acknowledge them. Just to top all of that off, they refer to themselves as the downwinders because they were downwind of this fallout. And while I was in the site, there was an official man in a vest and he was sitting at a table with trinitite, which is the sand in this explosion zone that turned green from whatever chemical process happened at the time of the explosion. You can pick up these green, well, I didn't, you're not supposed to pick them up actually. And actually there's a sign that says if you take one home, it's a federal crime, but anyway, He's got a table full of these little green rocks and I overheard him and I even, I think I have a clip of this too, where he's telling people that you get more radiation from your own basement. Yeah. I'd say in the Northeast it's even worse, up in Pennsylvania and all that, it's way worse than out here and everybody's got a basement. And they enclose the basement because of energy of the Well, that's not what you want to do. And that the downwinders are all a bunch of liars and maybe on the day that it happened. A few of them might have gotten a little bit of fallout. So here's the deal. So in Los Alamos, I'm from Los Alamos. Okay. A number of years ago, there was a guy who said, oh my God, there's a cluster of brain cancer in Los Alamos because of all the radiation in Los Alamos. Uh Well, no, they didn't do their epidemiology. So in my opinion, are the downwinders effective to this day? No. And he also said the people in Los Alamos with the brain cancer cluster that they're liars too. Yeah. So it's just, it's all disinformation. And there's just so many different factors that are stomach churning about what happened with that project and all the secret government stuff since. And yet you go there and you witness a carnival atmosphere and a happy-go-lucky public who are almost completely ignorant of what really happened then and it wasn't an educational time where uh, some mainstream but well-meaning guys explaining the history of what happened. America, please stay. Look how this kid loves right. It was just a a party and a picture posing time at the obelisk. Where you can buy a t-shirt and a coffee mug. Skip along with your children. Go America. Yeah, I'll see your spot. Okay. Well, I'll <laughs> there you go. Gotta push it hard. One more. Push it hard. 